Lord, we pray that they discover new life in you. Thank you for the villages and the pastors and the churches that are supported and planted and the children that get to do Bible study and kids clubs and learn more about you. Thank you for the work of Samaritan's Purse and Operation Christmas Child globally as they go into places that are often hard and unwelcoming, but they can bring the light of Christ. So, Lord, I thank you for all the hands that have packed these and all the stuff we've got for next year and postage covered and all those little miracles along the way this year. Thank you for Coral and Les for championing this cause and for us as a church getting behind different things to give each month. So, Lord, bless these boxes. You know each child that will receive them. And we look forward to news uh, in March or April next year of where they got to and how many were sent and all those fun things. So, Lord, bless them. Amen. Up the back also is our uh, new church directory, and we like it to at least be correct for two weeks, at least. So, so if you, so if you could check uh, your email address, that's the one that normally knocks people over, and make sure your mobile number's right, and and where, what's there, and check that up. And Val's put that together, looking good, Val, and we can make the font bigger for those that struggle. Amen. Yes, get that magnifying glass out. Yes. So we can we can do many things. Um, so have a have a look and check that, and and we can make sure that we get that out in a week or two with the changes and things like that. So so this is this is the draft number two, I think. So so that's very good. So if you could look at that, that would be good on the back table, as well. If you're not in there and you want to be in there, please. Uh, there's a pen and paper if you'd like to be in our church directory and you're not there. Uh, you can do that as well, and we can add you to the list. We don't share that information with anybody. You won't be rung up about printer cartridges or investments or whatever. So, so you'll be you'll be right. We're just in house for us. <clears throat> Never underestimate God's goodness and His provision. And we're in a little series called Fresh Start and. And um, last week, uh, we had Moses, and this week, we've got Elijah, and maybe Jesus next week, because he's the king of the fresh start. Let me pray. Father God, I thank you that this morning, as we open your word, Lord, lead us and guide us. May we be people of fresh starts. May we hear your word and hear your call through the stresses of life, through the disappointments in life. God, meet us in that place and provide for us. Can I buy anything? No. no. Some father had come up to get some, Hello. some eggs. Hello, Zoom. How are you going? <laughs> just, a, just an angel of the Lord. Yeah. So, Elijah, this week, I want to springboard off a plate. Are we all good? Yep, thanks, Nick, whoever's over there. This week, uh, I want to springboard off a place that Ron took us back a couple of weeks ago because I was listening. Yeah, because our mate Elijah, you know the story, he, he gets a fresh start. Jezebel wants him dead. Don't let the presence of other voices, I'm sure Val had read my notes, Stop us, distract us, stall us from our fresh start. It's First Kings 19. We'll be in there today. Verse 1 and 2. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of them. She wanted him dead and gone. She sends a messenger. Why didn't she go herself? Tomorrow, I'm coming to get you. Jezebel couldn't back up or follow through on what she said and what she was going to do. Tomorrow, Elijah, you're going to get it. 
I would have run away. Anyone? We see here, even though Jezebel was wicked, wicked, evil, evil as she was, wicked as she was, angry as she was, petty as she was, she had no power over God's servant, no power over the prophet of God. Her only hope that, that he would abandon God's call, he would abandon his role, he would abandon being a prophet and spokesman for God because he knew death was coming and death would be at his door. It's going to take flight in a minute. But God was with him. Friends, plant your feet where God has planted you. Plant your feet firmly here in this place. Opposition may come, but we're staying put. God has called us here. Who's believing and hoping for a fresh start and brighter tomorrows? Here at 24 Valley Drive, we're getting a fresh start. They're going to bulldoze the block. That's about as much as I know. It's a start. It'll be a fresh start. But for our mate Elijah, fear and distress comes and grips him, even though he's still alive. Verse 3, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba in Judah, he left his servant there. If you know the story of Elijah, he has just had some great victories. He spoke and prophesied a three-year drought. No rain for three years. Then he said it's going to rain and it rained. Then we've had the my God is better than your God challenge, if you know that story. Shout a bit louder. I don't think he's heard you. Maybe he's busy or traveling. And so we've got the prophets of Baal screaming and yelling and cutting themselves and Blood is flowing everywhere. And then Elijah comes up and offers a simple prayer and kaboom, fire from the Lord comes down and licks all up the water and all the burnt offering and all the... And the prophets of Baal are slaughtered, these false prophets. Because no one is greater than our God, who is indeed the, may, the way maker, miracle worker. And now Elijah is running for his life because of her threats. He's not in a good place. First Kings 19.4, while he himself went a day's journey out into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Look at that. Take my life. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. He wasn't really wanting to die. Or he would have stayed around and Jezebel would have found him and killed him. Maybe it would be better or more accurate to say that he was running from his life. Maybe someone here this morning knows exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe you've been running from your life far too long. Weariness, weakness, tiredness. Stress, heartache, fix your eyes on the one, the one who has done it all. He cried out, I have had enough, up on the screen there. I've had enough, Lord, he said. 
take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Take it, Lord. As he lies in the dust and the dirt under a broom bush. What does God want to say to us? We're not a prophet. We're not some old bloke in the Bible. Get ready for your fresh start. Stop running from what you know God has called you to do. When you get in those dark places, God will meet you there. Because even people with the greatest faith have to deal with low moments in their life and in their walk with God. There will be a crossroad. There will be an intersection. There will be an interruption. There will be a turning point and God will step in. The Bible is not all sunshine and rainbows. Anyone read it? It's real stories of struggle and stress, of fear and faith, of a new start, of a new way, of a person restored back to the family and the community, of an old prophet sitting in the dust. Wanting to die. So amongst these pages, we see ourselves. Amongst these pages, we are reminded that God sees us. That God is there with me and with you. As we sit, as we rise, as we lay down, as we go about our day. When the news is good and when the news is bad. God is with us. First Kings 19.5, Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. In this dark moment, in our dark moments, sometimes all we need is one touch from God, one word from Him. Get up and eat. One reassurance that He is there. Now, this angel didn't say, What are you doing, you loser? Why are you hiding and running? Afraid of Jezebel, are you? You should have more faith. Should have prayed harder. No one's ever heard that, have they? But our God is a practical God. Get up and eat. There's a Bible verse for today. It's a new day, a fresh start. Eat. First Kings. 19 there, 6 to 8. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and some, a jar of water. He ate and drank and then he laid down again. Jezebel is in his head, but he wakes up and by his head are some baked rolls, some bread. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him because he'd fallen back asleep again and said, get up and eat. Come on, mate. Fresh bread. For the journey is too much for you. So he got up, ate and drank, strengthened by the food. God knows what we need for the journey ahead. He will bring along the right people, the right plans, the right expertise. For he knows what we need. God fed him even though he ran. God fed him even though his faith was shaken. God provided for him. Even though he doubted his own ability 
and call. God strengthened him for the journey and the task ahead. And God is with us as we consider our future, as he strengthens us for the journey ahead right now. Don't lay down. Don't give up. See what God will provide. Get up and eat. Nothing better than the smell of fresh bread, eh, Les? Remember those bread machines? Do people still have them? Oh, fantastic. You come home and the bread's done or you put it on the night before and you set the timer right, hopefully. So you have bread at eight, not 11 o'clock. And it, oh, it's, it's marvelous, magic. Fresh bread baked over hot coals. God provided sustenance for him. It's going to be great as we trust in him. 1 Kings 19, verse 15. A little reminder as we come to a finish today. A little reminder that God is at work behind the scenes. 1 Kings verse 15, 19, 15. Then the Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. Don't stay in the desert. Stop hiding in the cave. Stop disengaging from God's plan and his call. Verse 18 is the best bit of all. Yet, yet Elijah, I know you're suffering. I know you're doubting. I know you're struggling. I know you wanted to die. But I am the God who prepares the way. I am the God who provides. I am the God who sees. I am the God who knows the outcome. Yet I reserve 7,000, 7,000 friends in Israel whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, whose lips have not kissed him. A fresh start in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Michael. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Oh, thank you. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you that uh, we have a fresh start every day. Every day you've given us that we can start afresh. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the time that we've spent today. We ask that you will go with us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, girls and boys.